All right. Well, good morning, everyone, uh, and thank you for your patience uh, this morning. Welcome to uh, the MIT Sloan Social Impact Investing Webinar. My name is Tommaso Canetta. I am an Assistant Director of Admissions uh, for the MBA program here at MIT Sloan, and I want to thank you all for joining us uh, virtually from, from all over the world uh, to hear a little bit more about social impact investing at MIT Sloan. I'm joined this morning um, by uh, some great colleagues uh, and a current student, uh, so I'd like to introduce uh, Gita Rao, uh, who is a senior lecturer in finance. Uh, she comes to Sloan with um, a wealth of um, practitioner experience um, as well as academic experience. And then uh, we are also joined by Kelly Nixon, uh, the program manager for the finance group, and Joanna Light, a, a current student here in the MBA program um, as well. So. I'm going to pass it over to Professor uh, Rao to uh, begin this morning. Uh, if you uh, have any questions throughout the session, uh, the best way to submit those to us is through the chat uh, functionality of the WebEx. So you'll see a button for chat, um, and on there you can send the message uh, to myself, uh, to Tommaso Canetta, the host, uh, and then we will be able to filter those questions to the presenters. So at any point throughout the uh, presentation, if you have questions, uh, just submit them through the chat. And this uh, webinar will also be recorded, uh, so if you're not able to stay for the entirety of it, uh, we will send out a recording afterwards um, as well. So without further ado, I will pass it off to Professor Rao. Thank you, Tommaso. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to all of you since you're joining in from around the world. We're very excited to be um, doing this seminar. This is the first time we're doing it. Um, I, as uh, Tommaso mentioned, I'm Professor Rao, and I... Uh, I teach here at MIT Sloan, and uh, I, I, have, um, I have come with a background in, uh, in investments, both from the sell side investment banking and um, 20 years in portfolio management. We are really excited in the finance group here at Sloan to be offering this new class. We had a pilot last spring, and we now have the, 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 an official class a permanent class called Social Impact Investing. And our goal here today is to, uh, my goal is to tell you a little bit about how um, we are going to structure this class, uh, what uh, you, you can expect to learn and gain from it, and uh, how is it different from perhaps from other offerings that might be out there. And finally, to uh, hopefully answer your questions and address your uh, comments and, and about, about the um, about the issues around social impact investing. So um, moving on, uh, I, I've titled this slide, What is Social Impact Investing? And um, I think there's as many views and opinions on this, on this uh, question as there are uh, about what's going on in Donald Trump's mind when he's tweeting. Mm -hmm. So it is, a, it is such a sprawling field with, uh, and it, it spans the entire range, and that's what uh, you can see in this slide. You know, it's an investment, you know, so we are not looking at grants. We're not looking at um, philanthropy, but it's an investment. So there's an expectation that there will be a return of capital and a, and a certain range of possible returns. The investments are across a very broad range, you know, across asset classes, across sectors, across geographies. Um, so it can it can range from affordable housing in uh, in the United States and charter schools in in uh, in developed in the developed world to uh, you know clean water whether in Brazil or or China or India. There's a focus on what we call positive impact, which is trying to ha generate some measurable social or environmental impact. So that is that makes it different than uh, negative screening. In the class, we will also cover negative screening, but this makes that practice different, where, you know, where we, it's not like we're looking to just filter out the, you know, what's bad, whether it's you know, weapons, tobacco, alcohol, whatever. And finally, it is across a wide, wide range of organizations. You can have... Um, Companies, you can have organizations, you can have philanthropic funds, uh, you know, like the Omidyar Foundation or SCOL. But what, what we are going to really focus on is for-profit entities. 
So these are profit, for-profit entities that are looking to generate a positive return, uh, re generate a range of returns while taking on a certain amount of risk with a focus on positive impact. Um, the case for social impact investing, I, I, I'm not sure I need to make this case given that you are on the call, um, but let's just talk really quickly about this. Um, we can, you know, there's obviously, we have markets and markets have solutions and they work very efficiently and very effectively. And we have regulation for the situations where markets cannot provide a solution. Impact falls in between those two things. And, and the reasons for that are, are, in many cases, structural. As government budgets go down, both governments and philanthropy are looking for ways to more efficiently allocate capital. There's an increasing awareness that the challenges that we face in the 21st century are way too complex to be solved by, the gov by government and or the social sector. There's also an awareness that making grants, um, giving money unrestrictedly uh, without, without a return expectation is not necessarily the best way to generate positive impact. And so social impact investing as we see it is a creative way to address some of, some of the pressing challenges, whether it's climate change, whether it is uh, the lack of access to healthcare education, um, financial services, or even if it is just to improve the state of the world in, in these, in these uh, spheres. On the, so that's on the supply side. On the demand side, there's been a huge increase over the last decade in entrepreneurs who are looking to have impact in, in a business context. So using a business framework to try to creatively solve these problems that we face. So the class is course 15495. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how we are, I'm structuring this class and how in, in what way it's different than what you might see at, uh, you know, at other schools that you might look at, whether it's prospectively or if you've been admitted. At, Sloan, you know, we have a history, a deep and rich and long history in investments. And we have a bedrock belief that investments are the engine of growth in an economy. So all investment is inherently impactful. The difference when we talk about social impact is that we are looking to have impact, not just in terms of returns, profitability, but also with a social purpose explicitly in mind. So that's the difference. How, are, how is it different the way we are going to go about it? We are going to, again, one of our, the hallmarks of our department here at Sloan is analytical rigor. So as your faculty, my goal is that my students in this class come away with the toolkit they need to be able to analyze companies along the spectrum of social impact. So going all the way from very early stage venture capital, all the way across the spectrum, you know, PE, and then moving on from there, you know, private equity, moving on from there, to public markets, uh, environmental, social governance oriented portfolios, whether it's in equity and fixed income. Along the way, we would also look at the role of debt in, in social impact and, and why is it different than that of equity. Another of our objectives is to engage practitioners. So the class, in the classroom, we will be, we will be engaged in um, teaching, discussion. We will have cases, we will have analytical exercises. We have also a parallel stream um, that will engage practitioners who are hands-on practitioners, people who are actually doing this work to um, dovetail with what is being taught in class and what is being discussed in class. And this is to provide um, you, the students, with the opportunity, a forum to really challenge these practitioners, to question them about what they're doing, how they're doing it, why they're doing it, how did they arrive at where they are, and are there different ways to do it? 
And I'll talk a little bit about the kinds of speakers we've lined up this year. We will compare and contrast these investments with what you can think of as traditional mainstream investments. And in this respect, also we are different because of our deep um, DNA here in investing at Sloan, we are able to do this. We are going to look at social impact investments and compare them with ones where the, 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 the goal is primarily return and say what, what is different about these and what are the structural constraints that could prevent us from achieving these goals. And finally, a couple of things which are important and just because they're lower down in the slide, it doesn't make them less important. We have a rich network and ecosystem here and Joanna is going to speak to you about that. But in the class as well, you know, one of our goals is to provide you with career counseling and networking opportunities and impact investing. And um, if you see the last bullet, it's in red because this is really important. 15401, managerial finance is a prerequisite for this course. So when you're looking, if you've been admitted, when you are looking at your um, uh, registration dashboard, um, please, you know, at WebSys, please uh, take a look. Um, and, and then we would highly recommend that you also take corporate finance, which is 15402 in the second semester of your first year. Um, the reason for this is, again, it comes back to our, the core belief. If one wants to study impact investing, whether, be, whether one wants a, you want a career in impact investing or you want to invest for yourself or you want to have some context and perspective on this field, it's important to have a solid grounding in finance. And uh, so we really believe that it's very important that one has that um, basic structural fame, framework in finance. Moving on really quickly to the guest speakers um, whom we lined up this year. Again, we want to hit all the major areas that we're going to discuss in class. Impact measurement is a huge topic in, um, in, 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 this, in this space, particularly in private markets, because investors want to see impact and they want to see how impact is measured. Investees, for their part, are required to provide metrics to, to, and to follow them. So we are going to have somebody from Bridge Academies, which is a leading edutech venture in, in Nairobi, somebody joining us for that. Now they have, their academic um, group is here in Cambridge, fortunately, so someone will join us for that. Um, a former student, actually two former students, are um, at Abraj Capital in Dubai. And uh, one of them will join us from, he works in Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. He will join us to talk about healthcare sector private equity. We have a case of, um, to do with LeapFrog Investments, which is a VC firm in London. And one of their uh, partners will join us to talk about the case, about a successful exit. And then moving on to public markets, we are going to have people who will talk about how they pick stocks and structure portfolios. And also, we'll have someone in fixed income. And finally, we will have um, consultants. You know, consultants are very important in this space, just as they are in, in investing um, broadly, uh, to talk about benchmarking um, and how investors' um, priorities have changed over the last few years. Moving really quickly to the next slide, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but to give you some background, Bridges Ventures created a spectrum to help us understand what are the, the return and impact objectives among investors. Um, starting from the left, uh, you can see where it says financial only, and this is not a, in any way uh, a, um, you know, a reflection on the companies that I've chosen as examples, but I've chosen American Funds. This, uh, the, this is a fund complex um, based out of uh, Los Angeles. This is capital, uh, the Capital Funds Group. And the American funds is one of the largest mutual funds in the world. Um, I think the assets are around 250 billion. And um, they're, uh, they don't have any kind of social mandate. So that, that's an, you know, there's nothing. There's no regard for ESG practices explicitly. So that, that's an example. Then we move on to ones that think of themselves as responsible, but they do that by trying to mitigate risk. So that's uh, Pax World is a, another mutual fund company that is actually based in New Hampshire. Then we move on to firms that try to have, be more proactive. That is, they are 
trying to select companies to invest in. This Breckenridge is a company that invests in public fixed income, public debt around the world. So they are trying to identify companies, uh, the bonds of companies that are, that are actually adopting pro progressive practices. So all three are, you know, are in the public space. Then as we move on, as you can see, the, uh, looking at the top heads, you've got impact right across there. So what you can, the way to distinguish between these two blocks is direct versus indirect impact. So when we look at public, the public sphere, that's passive or indirect impact. And when we look at the private sphere, that's much more direct impact. You're trying to actually have impact in the communities or you know, with the groups of people that you're working with. So for example, a, a firm like Corner Capital is trying to generate competitive returns while focusing very explicitly on certain social issues. Uh, Omidia Network is trying to do the same thing. They're, you know, they're uh, funded by the uh, Omidia Foundation. But, so they are less focused on the return. So they're looking at more longer term um, problems. For example, access to financial services. So micro lending, this takes you know, 10 to 15 years to come to fruition. Then we move on to uh, funds like Acumen, where they are really talking much more about very, very pressing problems like public health or the environment or um, you know, stuff like that. And that, they, they may be very little focus there on return. And in fact, they may partner with the government. And finally, we get to what is impact only, and this is philanthropy. So in our class, we are not going to look at philanthropy. That's a vast field in and of itself, and there's so much else that comes into that. We are only going to look at these first one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. That is, we are looking at enterprises that are explicitly focused on generating some kind of return. Moving on to the next slide, very quickly again, there's a lot of text on this, but just to, to, to give you an, a sense of the complexity of this space. The first block, this is the supply. These are the people who have the money. And they run the gamut. At, the, at one end, you have what are called retail investors. This is you, know, you or me or, or Tomaso or, or Kelly or Joanna or anyone else. Um, high net worth individuals, people who want to have, you know, who want to invest with their values, um, all the way up to government, where government is just, you know, the, the government is there to uh, to achieve certain social goals. Intermediaries, intermediaries play a very important role, and uh, they again sometimes you can have fund managers. So, like we talked about, Pax World or Breckenridge, um, banks have become increasingly involved, particularly in in debt issue like green bonds. Um, crowdfunding is something that's starting to take off. We're not going to talk much about that in this class. It's, it's better left, you know, for another class. It's a, it's a complex subject. And finally, you know, you can have no uh, intermediaries. You can invest directly, and there are a number of startups that are trying to enable that. The last block is the investees, the, 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 the firms that need the money, right, or, or the organizations that need the money. We are not going to look at nonprofits. We're going to look at social enterprises, uh, private companies with purpose, and public companies. Those are the, the three blocks that we are going to look at. And on uh, the next slide, page eight, these are the asset classes. Not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we have you know, private equity, public equity, and different kinds of debt. This is really grossly oversimplifying, actually. Um, summary of private markets. Uh, I, I'll just highlight a couple of things for you here. There's a lot of data. But um, the amount of money that is flowing into this space is growing exponentially. 50% of the assets are going to emerging markets, and the top geographies are, interestingly, the US, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Latin America. The asset classes in, in terms of private markets are private debt, real assets, and private equity. Let's, uh, let's move on to public markets. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that um, focusing on environmental, social, and governance factors can help generate better returns. Um, sound standards lower the cost of capital. Um, these are companies with a longer-term focus. The management is focused. And it, it, it treats 
you know, shareholders and the as and the and the community, their suppliers, their um, and so and their employees as stakeholders. And uh, the, the latest figures suggest that over 13 trillion in assets are now managed in this fashion. And the UNPRI, the Principles of Responsible Investment and the Global Compact, have been uh, major contributing factors to this. So this brings me to the end of uh, my uh, overview of what the class is going to be about. Obviously, you know, we'd be happy to take your questions. But I'd like to turn now to um, Kelly, uh, who's been a huge supporter of this class. Thank you, Kelly, for all your uh, efforts. And uh, to talk a little bit about how this dovetails with um, the rest of the finance group offering. Thank you, Gina. So at MIT Sloan, we offer a number of ways for students to tailor their MBA curriculum to a particular career path. Two of these ways are through certificates, which are open to all MIT graduate students, and tracks, which are open to MBA students only. When combined, students have the opportunity to really hone in on a specific interest. For students interested in impact investing, many find that the combination of the sustainability certificate and the MBA finance track provides an ideal academic background. The sustainability certificate provides a curriculum to help students understand sustainability issues in depth and also to develop the essential capabilities to change the game, while the finance track curriculum gives students training in the foundations of financial theory and exposes students to the institutions and practices of the finance industry, both which are key skills when looking at a career in impact investing. Both of the, the certificate and the track offer access to learning opportunities, which is something that Sloan is known for, and these allow students to work on team projects while engaging with company sponsors on real problems they are facing. Um, we have the Pro Seminar in Investment Management and in Corporate Finance, and also the Finance Research Practicum, and then we also have the Sustainability Business Lab. Of course, many students find other ways to tailor their experience at MIT Sloan without participating in tracks and certificates, but this is just one way to do so. Um, all right, thank, thank you, Kelly. And I think now we'll move on to uh, Joanna, to slide number 12, um, to talk about the student perspective on impact investing. Hi everyone, um, so just to give you a brief background um, on me, I'm an international student, I'm originally from Portugal and before Sloan I was working in investment management uh, in Lisbon and I also did a lot of work as a volunteer in the social sector. I led an NGO in Portugal for three years and I also traveled to developing countries uh, like India, Colombia, Haiti to work with local communities. So I'm very interested in the intersection of finance, that is my professional background, and the social sector. I'm also a dual degree student at MIT. I'm doing an MBA at MIT, and I'm doing an MPA at the Harvard Kennedy School. And, and again, this is the way that I found to bring the two worlds together. Um, here at MIT, I'm the co-president of MI3, that is the Impact Investing Club at MIT Sloan. And MI3 mission is to be the space and the, the facilitator to help students to learn the frameworks and the tools that, that they need to be successful in the impact investing space. And we work very closely with the finance, uh, the finance department here at MIT and the sustainability department. In practice, what do we do? Um, four main things that you can see here in the slide. The main one is the training series then the action, learning, the networking, and the jobs and opportunities. So about the training series, we want, we want to make sure that students have the skills and learn the basic frameworks to succeed in impact investing. So we organized this year four training series uh, throughout the year that go from a brief introduction of what is impact investing, uh, how do you develop an investment thesis, and also more technical skills like how do you conduct a due diligence? How do you uh, value a company that is focused in uh, the social sector? How do you pitch um, a startup that you are interested in uh, to get investment? And our goal here is to prepare students and align with what Professor Rao was saying, uh, to make sure that students have these hard skills in finance 
So for example, the training series about finance, uh, the content that we uh, design for that training series, we work with people from uh, with finance backgrounds and they are the ones teaching these materials. And also to make sure that people learn about the social sector. Um, then the second thing is the action learning. In the action learning, we want to provide students with hands-on education and impact investing. And this means, for example, we help students that want to do an independent study with a faculty here uh, at MIT in a topic in impact investing that they may be interested in. And we also, for example, participate in a national competition that is MINT, that is organized by Wharton. And in this competition, uh, students are organized by sector, so if you are interested in healthcare, you can be working in a healthcare team, for example, or financial inclusion, workforce development, food sustainability, environment, and education. And here we have a very strong group of students who are working, who go to the training series, who are taking, who are um, now um, uh, sign registered to the impact investing course and they are really um, motivated to work in this competition uh, especially after last year uh, MIT won the means competition and so we have a strong group of students who are motivated and keen to win the competition again um, Another thing is the networking. So we organize a lunch series and we invite guest speakers uh, from the impact investing area. And we co-host this uh, training series with other clubs here at MIT, the VCP club, the Net Impact Club, the Investment Management Club. And we also co-host events, uh, events with other uh, schools in the area, uh, mainly HBS and Fletcher. Um, and about finally, just uh, about jobs and opportunities. This year we are organizing three career tracks. We organized one career track in New York, another one uh, in Boston, and in April we are organizing um, a career track to DC uh, so students can connect directly with potential employers. And we also organized uh, last semester a resume session where we had an expert from the impact investing space who helped students to structure their resume in a way that uh, the resume is written um, in a way that the impact investing employers will find it attractive and will actually look at it and call you for an interview. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm happy to answer any question that you might have about MI3, my experience here at Sloan, or impact investing at MIT. Thank you, Joanna. And uh, we come to the last slide, which I think is quite self-explanatory. <laughs> so uh, I think at this point, we'd be happy to take your questions. Yeah, so uh, once again, if you do have any questions for uh, for any of the presenters this morning, um, feel free to submit them via the chat uh, function of WebEx. So uh, you can just type in your question and send it uh, to to the host, uh, to me, Tommaso, and uh, we will uh, pass those on to the presenters and have them respond uh, here. So um, any questions, uh, feel free uh, to put them into the chat now. So we have a, a question uh, from Shruti about uh, being curious to hear about how people who are career switchers can take advantage of MIT and MIT Sloan to break into the impact space. Um, Shruti, uh, this is Professor Rao. I think this is a great question. Um, we hear this all the time from students. Um, of course, Kelly can speak to just the finance track and how it can help people who are career switchers. I can, I can uh, speak to the impact investing class and MIT. Um, we, uh, the uh, class itself is, is very closely integrated with the sustainability initiative, which in turn is uh, linked into the MIT, the MI3, the student um, impact investing in the initiative. The, there's a very rich ecosystem here for people to, you, you can get advice and guidance from people you know, well before you get to campus in terms of how you ought to structure 
your course of study and the kinds of action learning you do, the kinds of um, internships you look for, uh, all of that, you know, the, exactly how that ought to be structured to break into the impact space. And um, I, I, for myself, I'd be happy to put you in touch with uh, students who, I, who have come out of non, completely non-finance backgrounds, done a pivot, taken the finance track, um, and the sustainability certificate, and then uh, are now working, for instance, at renewable energy um, uh, uh, companies. Um, yes, to second that, I think um, a path such as taking the finance track and the sustainability certificate would be perfect for someone who's looking to break into the industry, um, while many people with finance experience also take the finance track. For career changers, it's great because it does provide this curriculum path and um, you have that additional mentorship to kind of help make sure that you're tailoring your academic background to make sure you're all set to have a successful career in impact investing. Yeah, from uh, just to build on that, from a student perspective, I think uh, MIT right now is even better prepared to help students that want to make a career shift to impact investing not only from, with the classes that um, are being offered right now, uh, the finance, the sustainability related classes, but also now the new impact investing class, but also with all the resources and the culture that MIT has. For example, a second year student, she's my friend, she didn't have any um, investment or finance background, and she applied to uh, do uh, independent study in January last year, um, and she was working in Australia in impact investing and helping them to mapping the impact investing initiatives that were um, happening in Australia. And this was com all supported by MI3, uh, MIT sorry, uh, financially. And in the summer, she because she had that experience in January, she got a summer internship in impact investing uh, at Omidyar in DC. And this was only happy be how, uh, possible because of uh, MI MIT uh, support and resources. Great, thank you. <laughs> have another question. Uh, could you please share some information about the action learning labs uh, related to impact investing and different internship opportunities? Yeah, so this, this is another great question. Um, I teach an action learning uh, class, finance action learning class called the Finance Research Practicum. Um, and we'd be happy to provide you uh, all with the um, course number after this. Uh, and that class has uh, a, you know, a minimum of three action learning related projects every year. And it's a deep dive in the month of January and then um, half time in February and uh, March, so the first half of the spring. Uh, to, just to give you an example, this year we had a uh, VC firm called Catalyze Ventures, um, having the students impact um, in, in analyze a uh, solar energy project in India, whether it made sem sense for them to, uh, um, to invest in the solar energy project in India. Uh, we had uh, Acadian Asset Management here in Boston with a project on uh, women in senior management. Does that, is that a factor that can um, uh, give stock alpha? Mm -hmm. And um, the third project we had, uh, actually we had four this year now that I'm thinking. We had a third project with Arabist Partners in London on human rights. And um, the fourth project we had was with MSCI, um, uh, which is a research and data service on um, how ESG factors impact the risk of um, publicly traded equity portfolios. So that's that about the, um, the labs. Uh, there's also, you know, Joanna can talk about other action learning labs. In terms of in, internship opportunities, I think, you know, given this very rich ecosystem between the finance group and sustainability, uh, there's a lot of stuff filtering through. Um, Joanna, you might be able to add some color. I, I, I get asked frequently by the uh, project sponsors in my lab about whether students are available. Yes, so uh, from an uh, uh, MI3 perspective and extra learning, uh, as I mentioned, we help students to do independent studies with faculty and that's a way you can, there are a lot of faculty that they work with directly with companies and they do research for companies and students are more than 
welcome to join that research and learn from that. And also, um, we have the Mint competition, as I mentioned, where you have all the training series and then we help students um, to win the competition, basically. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, that's a very um, valuable actual learning, the Mint competition and all the process uh, to get there. And there's also another competition that we um, help students to participate. For example, one that is organized by Morgan and Stanley, that is a sustainability investment challenge. And there is another one that is a venture capital investment competition. And all these competitions, we let the students know and we help them to uh, build uh, the skills. And we also connect them with faculties that are interested in these competitions and to advise students. About the, the internships, for example, this uh, last summer we had um, some students interning uh, in impact investing. For example, we have students working for Axion, for Omedia, for uh, Kona, and um, these were all connections that we made here at MIT. And now, with all the career tracks that we are doing, it's much more easier for students just to meet with the employers or potential employers and to um, do a summer internship or to get a full-time position. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this point for our presenters? All right, well, it looks like we've answered all the questions at this point. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, have you found that recruiting for impact investing jobs involves a lot of travel? In, does the recruiting, um, it depends, for example, the, if you, there's uh, some players uh, in impact investing here in Boston. So for that, when we did our career track, and we did it uh, with Fletcher and HBS, um, you didn't have to travel a lot. For example, we were uh, we visit um, um, social um, social, social finance. So, yes, thank you, social finance, mm -hmm. and that is just uh, you just have to cross the bridge. Um, another, I then can share with you the list of the, of uh, organizations and companies that we visit. And for example, if you go and you want to work in New York, you would have the first interviews you can do via Skype, but then at some point, if you get a second round, you will have to travel to New York or DC um, to meet them and do that final round. And I also think that um, impact investing is something that is infiltrated kind of throughout the finance industry and even the consulting industry. Um, so you don't always have to go to a specific impact investing firm to find a job. For example, um, last year we had former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick come speak to our students, and he um, just started heading up um, the social impact division at Bain Capital, which is a local company here. So um, it's kind of throughout the mainstream industry, finance consulting, and other areas as well. Great. A great question for uh, Professor Rao. Could you share with us what you enjoy most about teaching impact investing? Um, Annabelle, thank you for your uh, question. Um, I was just reflecting that, reading it. I think um, there's a few things, you know, um, and I'm just saying this stream of consciousness. Uh, one is uh, the students are, uh, they just have, uh, they come from such interesting backgrounds. They've had such interesting personal journeys. Uh, some of them come out of finance, mainstream finance, and want to um, sort of uh, focus on impact. Some of them uh, have come, like, like Joanna, have come out of, you know, finance, but they have this NGO interest, and, and they want to swivel more directly towards impact investing. And then we have people like Sarah last year, who, was, uh, who worked at Oxfam for a long time, so people who are really who have been in either the humanitarian or the impact sector who want to learn finance. 
And this is a field that has been very mission driven for a very long time. And uh, in part because of the difficulty of modeling things analytically, or you know, looking at it in terms of hard numbers, it hasn't had a lot of, um, you know, mainstream finance has not looked at it very, uh, very closely. And I think for me, apart from the students, the second thing that I think is very uh, interesting, challenging, you know, exhilarating is bringing the, um, the, the tools, the toolkit of, of uh, systematic finance to bear on these uh, social impact investments. It, I think it would be th those two things. And then finally, to see what the students end up doing with this knowledge base that they acquire is a very, very gratifying. You know, in any in, in any way in which I can help them is is wonderful. Great, thank you. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, we hope you found this webinar helpful. Uh, once again, we will share a recording um, in the next few days uh, for if you missed any uh, uh, part of it. Um, but I want to thank uh, Professor Gao and Joanna and Kelly um, for their help this morning. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us, and uh, we hope to uh, see you either on campus or at another one of our virtual events soon. Thank you and enjoy. The